Yo, what's happening? We're live. Rule zero on this beautiful uh, Saturday morning. It is morning, morning. morning, guys. How's everybody doing? Ah, oh, fantastic, man. You guys got your gym thongs on? <laughs> we go commando here. Not on Saturday. Oh. <laughs> yeah, in the home gym uh, here, I like to I like to go commando or in my underwear sometimes. In the as you can time. see here, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Harassment free. Same. Well, Jeez. my girl comes in here and harasses me sometimes, but it's all right. I Thor, harass myself quite a bit, though. Actually, I was gonna say Thor stares at himself in the mirror, just gawking. Yeah. No, mostly <laughs> I stare. I stare at myself when I'm doing squats, and I say, "You corpulent copulator, get it on, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Shame myself. So uh, today's um, red meat episode is. Something I think is very topical, it seems, because I made a post uh, the other day about how the modern gym is like a strip club. And uh, women go in there and their asses and vaginas hanging out, titties hanging out. And then they set up the cameras for guys to, uh, you know, catch guys. Gotcha. Gotcha. Looking at my tits. Gotcha. Looking at me. So it's kind of it's kind of odd because coming from a combat uh, gym perspective, right? Where uh, a gym where guys go in there and beat the crap out of each other, and and you know in the last uh, thirteen years or so, a lot of girls have entered, a lot of women have entered the space uh, to do that too. They're learning to beat the crap out of other women. So, you know, there's some serious training going on, real serious hardcore training. You know, your brain cells and health are at risk if you don't do the things right. You know, and it's never been a problem. We've never had ogling or girls wearing inappropriate outfits to the gym to grapple, to fight, to spar. You know, they got their sports bra, they got their rash guard, they got their uh, their tights on and shorts over the top of them. Like they're they're prepared to do work and work hard and sweat and get in shape and become champions. And there's no none of this bullshit Instagram look at my asshole stuff going on. So. The offense that a lot of women take when you're like, well, wh why don't you wear something normal? You know, you can wear some loosely wet, I don't have to be baggy, but loosely fitted sweats and you're good. You're good to go. You're not going to get the same amount of eyeballs. You're not going to get uh, bothered. If you're not putting on cakes of make cake of makeup on your face, you know, which is uh, explicitly there to give off signals of, you know, suppleness and, and, and availability. Like you're not going to have problems. Yeah, but you know, John, the form-fitting, skin tightness, camel toe-inducing comfort that those camel toe modern, enthusiast <laughs> <laughs> that those you you know that those modern uh, yoga pants induce they're they're so comfortable and I should be allowed to wear what I want, be it something that enhances my camel toe or fluffs my buck knuckle. I should be allowed to do that in the gym. They should, should be, be allowed, allowed to do but, that. But but you know what? They they uh they know what they know exactly what they're doing. They are looking for attention, but they're looking for attention from certain guys, yep. not from you know what they perceive as creepers. And that all comes down to who they're attracted to and who they're not. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the only difference. Or or they're just trying to um the most recent one was the girl doing the hip thrust, right? Yeah. She's a mid, she's a six hard six doing hip thrust and there's a guy standing off the edge of the platform and to me he wasn't creeping he was waiting for her to get the hell off of the platform she was on she was on the squat she was on the uh the, the uh deadlift platform she's on the deadlift platform for what 30 minutes doing hip thrusters get out of here you're wasting time in the gym equipment right and then now you're now you're filming guys who are trying to like help put away the weight so they can get you off the platform so they can get their workout in and now you're like, oh, my God, these creepers. But make sure you sign up for my OnlyFans. She had an OnlyFans. So yeah. like that, that guy hanging around the platform was a bad person because he wasn't paying the $9.99 a month to look at her asshole. How much of this stuff do you think is just staged, though? Oh, if it's on the Internet, 100% of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think some of that. Even, like even us talking right now is KFAB and, you know, whatever. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're making a big deal of something that isn't that big of a deal. Because honestly, how often do you see that at the gym? Like, yeah, there's some girls who wear probably inappropriate clothing, but it's not the majority. 
the chicks that I see at, at my gym uh, that are dressed somewhat provocatively that actually are attractive. There's a lot of uh, chicks that are very unattractive at, at my gym. <laughs> I live in cow country guys. So, but there's a, there's some chicks that are, are, are in good shape and stuff like that. They are, they are very welcoming to all the male attention that they get at the gym there. And there's mm. uh you know, there's sort of like the crowd of usual gym bros that hang out there. They're always chatting with these chicks and these chicks just eat it up. You know, I've yeah. never seen a chick be like, ah, get away from me, you know, at, not at my gym anyway. Yeah, no, no that's I very that true. It case. seems I like it's the case too. Yeah. It's usually the more, the, the hotter chicks, the, the eights, nines and tens, they're more open and happy and flirty and they joke around about it. I think they're used to the attention, but it's the, it's the five, six and sevens that set up the cameras and ah, I gotcha. You can't look for free. You gotta, you gotta pay my only fans. Yeah, but you know it's funny. Even if even though they are five, sixes, and sevens, dudes are still looking. You know, you never underestimate the power of a simp. <laughs> <laughs> thirst, the thirst is real. Yeah, because because we we do talk we talk about you know scales like that five, six, and sevens, nines, tens. But in reality, I think for most guys, the scale is binary. It's bang or wouldn't or won't bang. Yes, you know, and so yeah. You, that, that's a very important thing. Um, <clears throat> like when girls are like, oh, well, these, I've had sex with this many guys or this many guys, you know, all these guys want to have sex with me. It's like, yeah, guys will literally have sex with their own hand looking at another guy's penis. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's the reality. Right. So yeah. what do you so you're that that's 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 the scale. Right. OK, a guy would have sex with me. OK, yeah. Well, he'll also <laughs> jerk off to another man's penis. Congrats. That kind of eliminates that scale. That means it's all fair game. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that bind that is. It's very binary with men. It's like would and wouldn't. Would and wouldn't. Yeah, I've had some interesting experiences in the gym. I've been going to the gym for a really long time doing the aesthetic bodybuilding. But before that, you know, I spent a lot of time in the uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, uh, schools too. And uh, it was segregated pretty much at that time. It was either women's classes or men's classes. So we didn't have much experience there with uh, the women. But uh, imagine doing, uh, imagine, I imagine you, John, have had women's classes and you're in very close personal contact if they're learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I would imagine that the, the harassment would be very low in that, in that, in that case, because they know oh. what they're getting into. They're going to get touched. They're going to get, gonna get touched. But I think also um, if a guy was creeping on them, they have the opportunity to choke the shit out of that guy. Yeah, they, they can respond, <laughs> right? Put exactly. on them, yeah. <laughs> Are you looking at me, creeper? Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, they, thing, they have a lot of authority there. That's for sure. One yeah. thing I would say to, uh, to guys is that, uh, you know, if you're going to like your conventional gym, you should probably just go there with the mindset of just working out. Um, sure. it's not, I mean, you can do it. You can pick up chicks at, at gyms, right? I mean, guys do it, but, uh, it's probably not the most optimal place to do it. If you wanted to do it in a situation where you're, you, you know, you want to go to the gym to pick up chicks at the gym because they, you know, that they work out, you know, maybe join something like CrossFit or, you know, a, mm -hmm. a jujitsu school. Very social. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they have, they have the, a lot those, of classes too in the gym. Yeah. Well, those types of things, those types of, uh, environments are more geared towards being social for more meeting social. people and talking with people and stuff like that, that they're a little more conducive for that. Uh, otherwise, like, you know, what, what are you really going to the gym for? You know, are you going there for your health or are you going to there to get laid? You know? No. Well, I've been in some big box gyms here in California and they're huge. They're massive complexes for sure. And uh, I think all of that occurs for sure. I mean, they're definitely going there for social interaction. Some are going there to work out and some of them are going there to get attention and possibly even hook up. And I think that there's, there, there's plenty of men that do that as well. Uh, and yeah. at least from these big box gyms I've seen and worked, worked through, cause I work in a large territory. So I would always work out at lunch. So I would be at like eight or nine of these over the course of a month. And definitely that goes on a lot. Definitely, especially in that 20 to 30 Time, time of day plays a big role too yes. in when you're going to come in across some of these people. You know, there's definitely a more social hour at the gym than, uh, you know, the early morning guys and the really late night workers. They tend to not have as many interferences with what they're doing. Yeah. There, there's you, Ryan. 
Hey, Ryan. I think Ryan it's Stone. And... Like that chick was so. What's the word for it? Scripted. Indignant. Like the, well, not even. Your uh, your she mic's a little low, Ryan. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Here, maybe I'll just get closer because I have it maxed out on my thing. Okay. You know what I mean? Like <clears> she just she sets up the camera to the perfect angle. She just sits there dressed in like her nipples hanging out. <laughs> so like it's it's what she wanted. She wanted the whole performative wrestling thing. Like I know a wrestling promo when I see it. Yep. And that's exactly what that one was. 100%. And so I don't like how everybody now having is isn't it, we're all having a conversation about our women really desire like uh oh, fuck off. You know what it is. This was some OnlyFans chick who's like, hey, you guys want to see my clam? Here's like yep. a skit to get you involved in it. You're like, I'm in Thottle Mania. <laughs> <laughs> like real girls they when they don't want to get looked at at the gym they put on a hoodie and they wear their headset and they don't talk to you yep and i hate this like fake mm -hmm. bubble of attention that people are building up you know so now we have to treat this as reality but it's not no no like I've yeah i've been I, to a gym where some girl was like waving it in my face and getting pissed off when i'm like no. get out of my squat rack with that thing it smells like fish i i went <laughs> to a gym and i was in vegas for like two years and I went to a gym there that used to be a gold's gym that used to be like the gold's gym where all like the, the competitors used to kind of train at it turned into something else. I can't remember what the name was, but there were multiple women there that were NPC com com competitors, you know, uh, bikini, the bikini competitors. And then like the, um, the next level, not the bodybuilder, but the next I level just... up that fitness, mm -hmm. you know, where they're a little bit bigger and they're in there and they're in sweats. They have sweatpants, sweat yep. top on like they're hooded up they're they're doing their work they're with their coach there'll be two of them with their coach they're not wearing booty shorts they're not wearing the leggings like they're there to work they're there to you know they don't talk to anybody else and they're not mean or whatever but they're still friendly whatever but they're they're focused they're they're there to win a championship they're there to make money because that's yeah. that's where their you know food comes from yeah you could tell those girls they always got headphones on a lot of times they got a ball cap on ponytail coming out the back they don't have too much revealing. Maybe the yoga pants, but it's it's Indiana. mostly correct. yeah. These were black yeah. girls. The they had the bandana like thing the attention on. whores aren't putting protein shakes on the the cage for the, the the bench press machine. They aren't doing curls in the squat rack. So at that point, I'm like, thought away, madam. Just stay away from my goddamn rack. You thought know? away. Yeah, <laughs> I have seen them. I've I have seen gals uh, hover in the Smith in the Smith machine <laughs> and just oh, keep geez. it for the whole workout, man. Doing all kinds yeah. of crazy stuff. Yep, thrust, like chicks you know. mostly steal all the leg equipment like they love that quad extension hamstringing uh extension stuff yeah. which is great because i never use it but mm -hmm. i'm like i guess and if somebody told me one day, it's like oh yeah you can tone your ass with this and get you know icky azalea ass and like well, and, and good. I'll do 100 sets can we take a moment and talk about the um the ridiculousness of hip thrusters <laughs> okay first off if you're doing hip thrusters i'm gonna smack you because Romanian deadlifts exist. Yeah. Okay. You sons of bitches. Quit being sign lazy. The waiver, bitch. Quit. Yeah. Sign the waiver. How about getting a wheelchair? Sign the space. waiver. Come on. <laughs> right. I would. Kick, if you're gonna, if you're gonna entrap men looking at your ass, at least do a real exercise. At least do something that's gonna work. Not this stupid hip. Ooh, hip thruster. Ooh. It's a. It's the stupidest workout ever. Rush Romanian deadlifts. Do those. Do you think Single chicks leg, do the hip thruster leg. machine just for the attention, though? Like sometimes. Like, and they're like, oh, the leg, this the is not sexual at all. <laughs> well, they do the, uh, they it's going to help their glutes, but ding dong. Mm -mm. It's helping it's something. The fitness industry. It's you know not what it hitting is? They what you think it's hitting. They set this whole kayfabe up for like, wait, I can get attention and tone my thighs? It's like, no, you can't. Yeah. And yes, you yeah. can. Wait. It's like, yeah, it's like they have a whole slew of exercises that don't really work that much but they get a lot of attention from everybody else in the gym yeah i wonder if like the only fans pipeline like the ai chicks i really hope that takes over only fans the way only fans took over the tate empire of chatterbait because hmm. i'm really sick of, like the chick that's barking like a dog the chick that's showing up like everybody always has this great origin story and then they drive you to their only fans and Let's face it, 90% of like the spheres content for men is just laughing at these chicks. So I would like the fall off effects of all of these people going away because AI waifus start making a, themselves a thing, you know? Did I lose you guys on that train of thought? <laughs> no. Everybody's just like, what no. the fuck is he talking about? But you know what I mean? 
Like, there's no real girls doing this. I've done, like, a deep dive. I actually checked, okay, how many chicks are doing this whole stop staring at me at the gym thing? Yep. All of them. All of them have, like, massive TikTok followings where it's the yep. only thing they do. All of them have links to their OnlyFans. Some of them are, like, in, like there's not a single girl who's, like, here's my fitness journey and then, like, slips that in in between her, like, 500 sets and 20 pounds down. It's all performative, and I hate this. It's, like, mm. outrage marking. And then poor bastards in our chat, right? They're watching this. And then if they don't have a large dating life, they're thinking this is what chicks are like in real life. And of course yeah. they're going MGTOW and scared to approach. They think every chick's an OnlyFans model. And I'm yeah. like, oh man. And there is a thread, Ryan, that, that goes through with the gals that about being leered at or looked at. I uh, had an example. I was working with some some of these bikini competitors and they were, they were chattering and gossiping as we're doing in between sets. I had a group of them. And then we had some regular gals that were getting involved. And they were complaining about one individual. And I've seen this at other gyms. And it's it's an it's an older, older senior sort of guy, kind of balding with a uh, pot the belly. Bucks left to give type. Yeah. And he you go maybe even on the spectrum. And he always wants to give workout advice, right? Uh, and they just absolutely have to chatter about how disgusting and sick he is and all that stuff. And and I have you know, I asked because I'd spoken to him once before. I said, Well, do you guys ask him to stop, right? Does he stop and do you stop? Well, yeah, but that's not the point. <laughs> it wasn't the point that he stopped when they asked him to. Yeah, yeah. Well, that we can't ask girls. To, that's like asking girls. Maybe you should approach the guys. They, they're not built for that. Yeah. They're built to like complain about something. And then the guy like, I'll fix that little lady. Let me go beat up the old man for you. Yeah. You know uh, I mean? Yeah. I was just saying, well, does he stop when you guys ask him? And they're like, well, yeah, but that's not the point. The point was they were having fun in their break, pointing oh. this old guy out as a creeper. They were enjoying that that conversation. That oh, wasn't the, the point. social flex. Yes. Yeah. I thought you like, enjoy that. Yeah. Guys, everybody uh, likes to feel like, oh, they feel special. Oh my God. They were checking well, me out. The They're looking thing, at me. What I shot creep. down this guy. Like, remember mm -hmm. that chick that shot down Ben Affleck on that uh celebrity Tinder app? She was like making her bones in this. All I did was tell Ben Affleck I wouldn't fuck him. And then like that was actual clout for her followers. Huh. But like here, great example. Chat, you might know Paul, John, Thor. Have you ever tried to hit on a girl during like her birthday party or anything like that? Mm, I've been a <laughs> door, I've I've been the doorman at some uh, bachelorette parties. Oh, and then stuff. you might have seen the other side of the fence. So I've been that guy. I learned this the hard way. When you hit on a girl, when there's more than like three girls around that she knows, mm. basically emasculating and embarrassing you publicly becomes her her raison d'être. You know? Oh no, no, I've seen that absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That yeah that's why that. I never that, hit on yes. large groups of girls. I'm like, no, nah, man, you become the ball in a game of like femme ball, and they just mm. crush it. Oh, there's geez. a it's there's not, a whole yeah, like method to the madness no, no, when it comes to a, there's there's a whole method when it comes to you know approaching groups of women but there's it's 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 like you're fighting an uphill battle you know it's almost like yeah. it's not worth it <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a, you can wait you can, if you wait long enough if you're at a like a a, a bar like not not we're, we're talking about gyms today but like if you're at a bar right and there's a group of chicks if a chick really wants a guys to approach her, she will find a way to like get away from the group and maybe make a round of the bar and stuff like that. Cause that's when she knows that, you know, more guys are going to approach her. If you just, you know, keep your eyes open, wait for that kind of moment. That's, that's a good time to approach. Oh. Mm -hmm. What's the gimmick or if you're just the most you? obviously toxic man in the area, they'll fight over you. I'm in Toronto. It's easy to be the most toxic man in the area. <laughs> yeah, you're in California. What am I talking about? You can, you can also play. We're going off on a tangent here, but you could also play a little. Uh, was it mayor game or uh, you know mayor's campaign at a bar in a situation like that? Um, Chesty talk. Chesty talks about that a lot. I think that's what he's referring to. I but I uh, learned about this a while ago. But basically, you uh, you and a wingman go up to all the people in the bar, not just like groups of chicks, but everybody in the bar, every table and clink glasses with everybody, ask out how, how everyone's doing and walk away. Eventually chicks are like, what's going on? Are these guys like a part of the bar? Are they, do they work here and stuff like that? They start getting curious and they come up to you. It's like, it's very passive, you know, game. That's interesting. My, yeah. my friends would call that planting seeds. Mm. There you go. Mm. Yeah. Planting seeds. Sometimes they uh, bear like, fruit, sometimes they don't. At the gym. Is that you where, know. like, hey, can I work in with you on this? Oh, sure. Maybe. Ha you has know, anybody like, done gym game here? I mean, 
I've never done my gym is my that's my temple, man. Oh no, yeah, no. I go, I go to the I'll gym to work out. Exactly. I'll be <laughs> like Jesus. I'll start flipping the tables of the money lenders if they start meat marketing me, man. Yeah. So so I, I, never, I built I built the gym in my garage, so I don't have to deal with it anymore. I don't gotta yeah. deal with that. We're curmudgeon, Thor. You gotta teach us this gym game. <laughs> no, I don't do it. It, it, the, it. The interesting thing was though, and like I've had guys ask me that because of the experience with these bikini uh, competitors and 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 things like that. You know, I got really ripped and shredded and I was always very, very uh, social in between sets coming in mm -hmm. and out with all the groups, the guys, the girls, the whole thing. And um, I, I look kind of unique. My name's Thor. So after a while, I would see the regulars and they would shout out, hey, Thor, what's going on? And then for some reason, I ended up with all the, the girls would talk to me. And so all the guys would say, oh, you get this. You got all this stuff going on. I had nothing. I was just being social in there. However, you, well, you polite, you don't make them feel creepy and you're yeah. knowledgeable. And I didn't so care. Then you become like this knowledgeable source of, you know, information. And then they like spending time with you. Yes. You know. and, and I didn't care to really, I mean, of course, I'm a, I'm a <clears throat> male and of course I wouldn't turn anything down that was offered. But, um, <laughs> you know, I don't make it obvious that I, I could care less one way or the other essentially is was my attitude. So but it's not I, like that's the point that you yeah, were there I, for. I acted genuine when even to the gals that were larger, say corpulent, uh, that they were doing well and encouraging that. And it went a long way towards all of them being very social and, and opportunities presented themselves very frequently. And so other guys in the gym were like, man, you got to teach me that game. It's like, it's, it's not that. It's just learning some social acuity in the gym, you know? Well, that's the game. It is the game, though, right? You know, you're like, oh, it's not game. Oh, it's but game. it is the game. It, it is. It is. <laughs> I had a, I have a friend that uh, he was competing for Mr. Olympia. His name is uh, Chuck Kohout. And um, he's got a pretty big following on TikTok. He, uh, he would go up to uh, competitors, female competitors backstage. And one of the things that he would do to run game on them was he wouldn't say anything. He would just walk up to them as they're posing in the mirror and just pinch the little piece of uh, fat behind their arm. Oh, that's evil. Right. Because like, <laughs> you know, women have a hard time building up this area. They have a hard time yes. losing fat there. So he just walks up, pinches a little fat and goes, hmm, and then walks away. And then he That's says, they'll, a and a half. They, "That is a Megan and a half." They, yeah, they uh, they spend the rest of the the time at the show just trying to qualify themselves to him. That's a good. That's genius. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> genius. <laughs> I will say that, like the the major um, gym game that I've seen from guys, the guys who are like you, Thor, like are the, the trainers, the guys who are there uh, with a lot of girls and go through a lot of girls and are training a lot of girls. It's not necessarily that all of their clients are the ones that want to sleep with them. That does happen. Right. Usually the married ones, but um, the other girls, because now you have a bunch of beautiful women around you that you Pretty actually selection. work with every day. You talk with, you have good conversations with, you talk, you laugh, they're working out, you're knowledgeable. It kind of lifts you up in that gym social circle. So yeah. now girls on the outside that you're not working with are looking at you like a piece of meat like that. That cannot be underestimated. John. That's super huge. That, that right there, that pre-selection from that process mm -hmm. it is huge for sure. Hey guys, you think are going to stop all of this? Like it's, you guys are talking about a very pleasant attitude, men and women co-ed in the gym. How much of that do you think goes away now that you got these, these only fans models hip thrusting and just waiting for an opportunity to put a dude on blast? Do you think it's going to have any effect or do you think thirst conquers all? There's man, conquers all. there's conquers all because there's always going to be that guy. Yeah, there's always going to be the guy that's thirsty and just can't. Because there's going to be there's a lot of guys you know who who aren't super active growing up, and then they're like, you know what, I'm turning my shit around, and then I'm going to the gym. They go to the gym, and it's like, oh, clams everywhere in their face and all the machines. They're gonna have some you know adjustment period. <laughs> gonna have to learn to keep the blinders on and and not stare. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if, if there's guys watching this and they do want to make the approaches in the gym, there's a couple things that are, that I'll just throw out there that I've seen other guys do. It's really, really simple is if you see a gal that's really fit and you want to talk to her, don't interrupt her in the, it, while she's doing the sets. But if you do learn the lingo of fitness, you know, some of these competitors, they have their own lingo. And if you know the lingo and you understand that they're a competitor, they're open to talk about it. That's their passion. That's why they're there. And that that'll go a long way towards establishing, you know, a conversation 
and most of them compete and you know offer that you you know you'll go and clap for and oh they'd be thrilled that's that's what they live for so you got to be smart you know you just don't need to interrupt them while they're working out especially the ones that got the hat you know, uh, they got their earphones on and they're focused. Yeah, that's not going to go well. Right in the middle of a set yeah. of like... For the most part, just, hey. excuse me. <laughs> yeah. just focus on yourself. Just like with anything, focus yeah. on yourself, work hard, but be personable, be, you know, smile, wave, whatever. Girls who are interested in you will, will put themselves in yeah. your vicinity. They'll make sure they're around you. You know, if some girl's following you in, his next, in the machine next to you, Every single time, every time you're going to a new exercise, to a new set. Oh, what do you know? She's right here. She's right here. Doesn't mean creep or whatever, but it's be yeah. like, hey, how you doing? What's up? Yeah, you just generally be being social. Uh, that's one thing that I learned from uh, Dr. Robert Glover's Dating Essentials for Men. Is uh, He really just teaches guys to just be more social. Go around, talk to everyone you meet, test for interest. Like you, you have no attachment to any kind of outcome. You're not trying to get her to do anything. You're just being more social. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that, Be if you curious. go to the gym a lot, you go to places where you start seeing the same people over, over time. If you yeah. start building a rapport with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's super important. It comes easy. It does. And, you know, interesting. I stopped going to all the gyms that I had the memberships for because, you know, I'd travel and I'd, I'd go to them. I stopped during COVID because most of them closed down. When they reopened within four or five months, I, I received four individual distinct texts. Hey, are you coming back to the gym? Oh, they were all from gals that I had <laughs> known or worked around in, in that. So I we hate miss John you. Anthony because now you have to preface like they're all girls and they're all free. <laughs> that damn guy <laughs> okay. has ruined it for the rest of us. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of interesting. Of course, I, I haven't gone back. There's Yeah. Jim's not my thing. I got this right now, so I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, John, I think back to Threat Point. Uh, it's a Dal Rock article. He came out with it like 10 years ago about how there was actually like feminists, economics. They were talking about like divorce rape, you know, where mm -hmm. and this is where, I'm going to get to the how this ties into the gym thing where men would see these acrimonious divorces, guys getting taken to the cleaners, you know, suicide, all that stuff. And those few publicized cases made every other guy change their behavior so they would start acting more submissive towards their wives you know coddling them a little more which ended up increasing the female resentment which actually increased the divorce rate well wow. and so like the threat point is something i always keep in mind is when i think about like you said the the thought maxing here where they're putting on hip thrust and doing this stuff on tiktok there's not that many girls doing it but every single one is publicized and so i think it's just really making guys act mm -hmm. more scared of women and yeah, the paradox of it is like you really have to just like not give a fuck, not care. But I mean, like Thor was saying, you can't just be like a creep walking up, it's like, hey, your hair smells pretty. Can I grab a piece? <laughs> you gotta be smart it. about it, right? But, <laughs> and this is why I don't know why like mystery and all the pickup stuff hasn't made a resurgence because it's literally like a pathway on how to get through this stuff. Yeah, you have to map the bar stuff to the gym. But it, it at least work. gives you a roadmap to know how not to be creepy if you have no social acuity whatsoever, you know? Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's a yeah, good strategy. That I, would be a very good strategy. That's, that's really one thing that I, I, I yeah, being oh, go ahead. social and knowing how to be social. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one thing that I, I say a lot to guys too, because they're, I mean, they're afraid to even talk to women out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I, I don't want to get a me too. I'm like, you don't, that doesn't happen when you just talk to chicks and you'll find that out if you just go up and talk to chicks and learn not to be a creep. Like there's a way to talk to chicks, sort of test for interest. You got to sort of recognize signs too, when they're not interested. That's a big part of it, right? If they're not interested, don't take it personally and be like, eh, you're lost and walk away, you know, but too many guys are, are, uh, they're afraid to even do that because of videos like this. You know, it's mm -hmm. like this. That's not real life. Internet's not real. It's not real. What? This is real. This is hey! real. Zero is real, guys. Right, no. come in. What, what for this? That's what we say all, all the time. Matt Wall shit, didn't you? Right? Right? I'm out. My, no, no. This is my reality. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to one up me with that Phil stuff, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Speaking of getting piled on at the gym. <laughs> yeah, piled on. I wonder if I'll get recognized in Reno finally. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. That'll, I'll consider that an accomplishment. You got to walk around with a uh, blue steel, though. Rollo. Blue steel, man. Yeah. yeah. 
So hey, the gym thoughts roll. Dude, Give us some dude, thoughts every on fuck this. every commercial break. I don't. <laughs> oh, that was good. Blue steel. They oh they they the way they did that too was was funny because it was like oh we got you that we got you now Mr. Red Hill you <laughs> coming back we're gonna get him the next time we come back from a commercial break but first yeah. let's do this raffle <laughs> yeah the raffle oh, shit. <laughs> yeah that was funny oh my god that was funny as hell too you know like Tim thoughts this whole thing we've had a bunch of points we were talking about threat mm -hmm. point from Dalrock. Oh. Um, Thor was bringing up like That's good ways to approach and that, and uh, Paul was even bringing up how um, like how to hit on like m groups of larger girls properly, and that sort of thing. Do you think and it's a good idea to hit on girls at the gym? I don't. I don't know. Do you think it's you're, a, there, you're there to work? You're there is that to work. A dating zone is that a sexual zone? How many zones Everything are left is for guys? Every, zone. Everything is sexual. Everything in right? California is yeah. In California, it is really. Oh yeah, yeah. These big oh, boxes are huge. Yeah, from yeah, Dave, Dave, Vegas, Dave. a lot of the gyms like that were kind of like that. But it, but at the same time, like when you're there to do work, you're there to do work. I, I made the distinct um, comparison between female MMA fighters when they come to the gym and they're there to do work because they're there to learn how to beat the crap out of people and fight and win titles and and make money. Mm -hmm. They're not. Their tits aren't hanging out. Their asses aren't hanging yeah. out. Like yeah. they're covered up because they're there to do work. Yep. Like it's no, mm -hmm. it's no bullshit. There's no makeup. There's no, you know, foo foo, whatever bullshit. Foo foo. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just foo -foo. they're there to do work. So, like, yeah. whatever you feel about, you know, women, women fighting, but there's a, a complete different contrast between those women fighters who are there to do work versus the 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 Instagram thoughts who are who are trying to catch guys looking at them who mm -hmm. are trying to sell their OnlyFans. This yeah. chick is not the first girl to do this. No. I know that there was like one about six months ago where the chick, well, you guys already covered this, didn't you? Oh, that's a good one. I've seen that one, yeah. Yeah, there was a, the, yeah. The, uh, this is a thing now. Yeah. And yeah. So what happens, I hate to say this, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know how like Rich Cooper does like, ladies, if you want to keep a man, here are six items that you can, <laughs> you can run yeah. through, right? And you have to let that simmer. You have to let it ferment a little bit. And so like four months, six months later, then you can use it again. And people are just as outraged, if not more <laughs> on the next go around. And it's like for a while, you guys don't know this, but Ryan and I do because we used to pass that around because <laughs> yeah, Rich awesome. did that. Rich did that. Like it was like, ladies, if you want to keep a man, you've got to uh, stay thin, keep your hair long, no tattoos, be debt free. You know, like all, all these things. I just did it not too long ago. Um, but, um, so it's like this bullet point checklist. It's only like six or seven right? <laughs> and a guarantee, like every six months, if you recycle that people just lose their shit. This is kind of like that. Like, I think, I think, we, I think girls are starting to pick up on this, like at least on TikTok or whatever. And it's like, like one girl beats the other girl to the punch, right? This girl is just repeating what that other girl did like six months ago. And it's just as outrageous. And people go, oh, I can't believe there's guys at the gym that are looking at women's asses. Oh, unbelievable. And it's like, get the fuck out of here. And then you find, come to find out that she's got an OnlyFans. So it's yeah. basically a, like, like Jason Hartman says, it's funnel marketing for women. TikTok is funnel marketing. Instagram is funnel marketing. And this is how it works. She goes and puts this out. Even if she gets a run up the flagpole for this, doesn't matter. Don't care. Oh, yeah, did you see that? She put an apology out. And not <laughs> Don't care. Apology. It yep. still works. Yeah. Well, but, another but thing, my too. Point too. You look at Patrick oh. Wooden here, for example. Like, he's afraid of at being at the gym because he treats this as reality. Like a lot of people don't know that wrestling isn't real, you know? <laughs> wait, wait, what? What? <laughs> what? Wait. Yep. Still real to me, damn it! Yeah. So, yeah. Wait, 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 it's right. real. It's not Internet scripted. isn't real. Social fans. media yeah. isn't real, and this isn't real. <laughs> one, one thing too that a lot of people what uh, is real? <laughs> this goes this goes back to what Rolo was saying, but uh, a lot of people don't realize this if they're not content creators. One thing that a lot of people do in in the content creation world is they look for trends, right? Mm -hmm. If something's trending, like you know maybe these uh, outrage bait videos are trending. More mm -hmm. people will start making them just to hop on that trend, just to get that, yep. you know. Wait, those, why, do you think, why do you think I picked this topic today? Exactly. <laughs> it's marketing. I, I made it. I made a tweet people talking about the, the modern. The modern gym is a strip club now, and it got more than sixty thousand impressions. 
you yeah. know, like 400 likes, something like that. So it's a hot, it's a hot pocket. Hot pocket. <laughs> hot pocket. <laughs> you got viral a few hot times pocket. off of tweets here. You're really going for going for blood in them. That was awesome. Sign the waiver, bitch. My hey, favorite thing in like a month, man. And, and John, you know what's funny? It's like when you do that, people go, finally, somebody had to say it. It's like you haven't been thinking this all along. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> a revolutionary thing that was said. <laughs> I know. Everybody stands up. Oh, he finally yeah, said. I, I, the reason I ask, like, so uh, there's the when you brought this up, I thought, man, this is a great topic because, like, I have written. Um, there's an essay for that. Um, I wrote an ah. essay once about, uh, like, it was called. It was called actually. It was one of my earliest posts. I think it was like in 2011. In fact, it was uh, musings at the gym because I was at the gym and I'm like, oh, I got to think. I was finally coming up with like original content. <laughs> At that, by that point, I'd run out of all of my my material from so swap days, and I was like, I was like, oh, because I was at the gym, and I and this was like in 2011, so like social media was not anything like it is, and the, we didn't have like cell phones everywhere, and girls weren't like you know, you know, thotting for the camera in the gym, but still, I saw like there was a lot. It was definitely uh, a pickup zone, I guess, for lack of a better term, uh, at the gym, and I was thinking to myself, you know what, it's probably not a good idea to use the gym as like a place to pick up girls and like I people fought me tooth and nail on that but then slowly they began to can't come around because I'm like if you like the gym that you're at especially if you're at like a big gym like in like a metropolitan area like you're in Atlanta or Los Angeles or Miami or wherever and you're at like a I don't know name a big gym I, I at the time it was like world gym right I was going to like a golds or world I can't remember which one but I was um <clears throat> I was writing about it. It would, would have been Golds because I was in Orlando at the time. And um, I'm looking around and I'm like, you know, because uh, I had people asking me like, I, like people knew who I was back then, like blogging wise. And they would ask me about shit while I was at the gym. And I go, you know, it's probably not a good idea to hook up at the gym if you like the gym that you're at. <laughs> because, yeah. because if shit goes south, then like not only are you that guy at the gym now, like assuming you're like, that's your sort of culture, I guess, or what, you know, where you hang out. Um, you also like, you're probably going to have to see that chick. If she was there at the, if, if she was there at the same time for you to pick her up in the first place, she's probably going to be there when you're working out. Yep. So uh, like at that point, if things get awkward, it's like, hey, what do you want to quit your gym? Because like you fucked up, you fucked up an approach or something like that. I'm like, it's probably not a good idea. That's why I was asking like, is, do you think that that's a good, I like, because people fought me on that at the time. I don't know if people would still fight up, fight me on that today. Well, no, the whole yeah, idea of dating uh, in a small pond. Put the situation too with instructors, right? Like a jujitsu or MMA gym, you gotta you gotta take a hard line with your like instructors. Like there is no fraternizing with clientele because that's you know that they're they're paying 150 bucks, 250 bucks a month to be at that gym. Well, if you chase them off because you dated them you broke up and then they quit the gym well like how much money a year did you just cost that gym mm -hmm. yeah it's also it's it's the the concept of dating in a small pond it's it's not usually a good idea it's like dating a coworker, you know like if if things go south you have to see that person every day you know like it's just at the at the uh, the best case scenario, it becomes a very awkward situation, right? The yeah. worst case, like you get kicked out of the gym, mm -hmm. or you know, you get you lose your job, you know, that kind of situation. Hey, you remember the military? They used to do that if they found out you were a service couple, one of you got posted off. Mm -hmm. Oh and yeah, depending you on how good your job was there, you could be out like a promotion, and that could set your career back years. And that's even if you're still together, let alone a breakup. Oh, dude, I had a, a a buddy of mine knocked up this chick in supply. And, and, of course uh, it's by the boxes. He supplied her. <laughs> he supplied her something. And, uh, our command master chief, he wanted to get a paternity test done, uh, a, uh, while she was still pregnant, you know, just to prove that they were the ones that, that he was the one that knocked her up so that he could send this guy to like mass or something. And, uh, so she, she was like fighting it, you know, because she didn't want a needle going through her stomach to prove this sort of thing. It was a, it was a whole fiasco, but, uh, Jesus. taught me very quickly. Like you don't, don't shit where you eat, you know, it's not a good idea. No. Yeah. Bound, bound to catch some kind of bacterial infection. Yeah. <laughs>
So they had the rise of these gyms in California, probably in the big metro areas. It was like the 24-hour fit, fitness club. Um, what's that one? Planet Fitness. And they're almost on every corner within like two or three miles of each other. And once you have a membership, you can go to all of them. So I, I did see familiar faces rotate in and out of gyms in, in time and, and experience exactly what Rollo said. Oh, I was hitting, I was with this girl and, you know, and this one gym and I got to go to this gym now because it's weird. So that definitely happens. Yeah. All right. We got a super chat here from Leon and I don't even know what this means really. He says, gentlemen, why do people keep asking, inviting destiny to talk about masculinity when he doesn't identify with his own? I don't know who that is. It's because he's so hot right now. That's basically it. <laughs> Rolo. like a... Wait, it was like wait. one of those guys that argues politics <laughs> and he's got like an open relationship. He does a bunch of drugs, that kind of thing. But he kind of got the start of all those communist bread tubers and then somehow ended up on fresh. Bread fit tubers. Yeah, that's good. All they cared about was follower ah. count. And that's why everybody wants destiny now because they want to jack his clout. And he's apparently known for people basically dick riding his clout and then building their Savage. own rounds. What? First what you tell me the internet is not real. Yeah. Can you believe it? Man, it's too uh, bad because everybody. What, what does he do? Is he like a guy, gamer? Just like, how does he? In like, yeah, uh, more or less. Destiny's this kid that came up through like uh, uh, Twitch. Uh, I don't know. Like, maybe this is a Gen Z thing or whatever. But like, well, I, maybe it's not because because <laughs> I see Ryan do the same thing on his channel. He plays fucking Minecraft and then talks shit out. <laughs> <He's>, eh, <laughs> let me tell you what I'm thinking about while I play a fucking Minecraft here. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> hunger and peace and you know. Oh yeah. Let's remember the remember back in the flood of 1865. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I I just I don't know how you how you do that. Like, but I I I can listen to Destiny, but I can't watch Destiny. Like if I watch any of his streams, if I watch his like YouTube channel or whatever, and he's, I don't know what, even what the hell game he's playing. I'm like, who the fuck plays this game for in the first place? And then second of all, it's like, how do you keep up with this? Like, how do you watch the game and then listen to him at the same time? And maybe it's like some sort of like Zen kind of like, you know, you get into this flow state or something. Like, well, it depends on the game. I don't know. Actually, dude, there's a thing. You have to pick a game that That's requires cool. no more than like 30% attention. Like there's yeah. some games that need hope focus, so you have to like pick the right one for it. And I, I can get it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe kinda... I see. I've the only games that I play. I, I've never been able to play like first person shooters because I have like st astigmatism, right? So like if, if I watch like in the first person, it makes me like queasy, it makes me yeah. nauseous because of my eyes. Um, but like I love real time strategy games, so that I can understand. But. Um, but uh like i i just could i did i for me to play a game that i'm not like devoting my full concentration to it's like it's, for, it's weird to, to me but you had a conversation with the guitar um yeah but people like hate it yeah. well I mean, <laughs> because it's like not like, only they don't hate it. like did you hear what i just said um yeah sure and you repeat like the last like three words of the last sentence um <laughs> <laughs> ask me how i know i do that with my wife all the time um yeah. no but as far as like destiny as, uh, as being some sort of legitimate like authority in this space i i'm i'm baffled by why anyone would consider him in any way an authority on the manosphere or the red pill oh, right. it all comes down to sound Actually, bites, contrast i think well, I think it's yeah, 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 the blue hair. I, every time I see him on like Fresh and Fit, I'm like, it's like Drag Queen Story Hour or something. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then, I, oh, it's Destiny. Um, hmm. But uh, like, he makes some good. Like, there's some things that I actually do agree with him on. But like, I'm like, why is why why are you here? Like, uh, is this not like you're the you're in the Twitch gamer set, right? Why why would you be considered in any way like politics and communism and stuff like that? Yeah, that's a, that's a stick. Uh, yeah, and and then so I was like, okay, so let me let me do a little bit of background on this guy, and I was like. Okay, so I looked because he was on. He was on. I don't know. He's got something going with Sneeko. That's probably why everybody thinks he's in some way legit. Mm -hmm. And I'm Speaking like, who is this guy too? <laughs> like, well, he's I've well, heard negative things about uh, any of these people. It's you know, a bizarre well, world. I know. I know. Absolutely goofy yeah, dorks. It's, just, it's if what the kids are into, John. Dorks, get any attention at all? I know. Where are the bullies? Where are the bullies at anymore? Somebody has been with these guys a long time ago <laughs> and they're just hiding their head. I'll be happy to rub their face the waiver, in the dog bitch. poop. Somebody needs to rub their face in the dog poop. Well, That's you know, it's funny. Have. It's like I just I just did I, – I mean the cat's out of the bag, right? I uh, I did um, 
um, Dr. Phil and people were like, why are you doing Dr. Phil? I thought you said you'd never do commercial television. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, I turned him down two years ago because they wanted me to do blood sports with Tommy Laird. That's what I said. So like, <laughs> okay, that's number one. And then number two is like, I did it because I didn't want, I didn't want Dr. Phil to go and get somebody like destiny and go, Oh, here's destiny. The foremost expert on the manosphere. <laughs> I, I, who else, who else is going to do it besides me? Right. So that's why, but like, I keep seeing like all these people who are get propped up as sort of like authorities in the manosphere and like, well, you know what, Rolo, you're not the only voice in the manosphere. And I, I agree. I'm not, but I, I would prefer that you go and actually do a background check on these people before you go and, but you prop yeah. them up. as like, they still authority. brought on that, that Ben Foth kid though. Oh yeah. Dude. Yeah. Let me, let me, you know what? No, how many people are in the How many people are in the chat? How many people are viewing right now, Fitch? I can't see. 232. Okay. Okay. All right. There's, there's no way they'll, Dr. Phil will watch me here. <laughs> uh, by the way, that, so that, oh, that Ben. Oh, that's funny. The Ben kid. Yeah, do you know him? Do you, are um, you aware? He of hates him? me for some reason. <laughs> well, I had no, I had no idea who he was, but let me tell you with it. Like I was sold on this. I was sold on the, I, uh, on the theme that we were going to talk about, like the state of masculinity today. And then like within the first five minutes, as you probably saw, by the way, there's a way more footage of Andrew Tate than they like put in the actual final show. But like seriously for the first like five or 10 minutes of that show it was just nothing but like the greatest hits of Andrew Tate and like, <laughs> Everything was like, fuck women, grab them by the throat, throttle them. This is how you get a girl. Ah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now now Rolo has to defend Star Wars, to and that's where we're at. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. That's, and they had to, by the way, they had to re-record that intro because we shot that back in November. And uh, clearly things have changed in Tate land <laughs> since, since then. But like, then they brought up that Ben kid. And I'm like, where the fuck did they get this kid? Right? I'm like, where, where is he coming from? And I will tell you, that's the one thing that pissed me off the most about that show is I know what they were trying to do. They're patronizing this kid who clearly is on the spectrum. I asked him after the show. I said, have you ever been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome? He says, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I, and anyway, I, I told him, I said, good for you. Like you're, you're actually like doing something to get over this and to sort of like put yourself out there because I see guys like rugby, for example, rugby is like a success story, very much on the spectrum. I mean, like extremely on the spectrum and he makes it work for himself. This kid, I think he has the potential for that, but like they brought him on there as like the retarded kid on there and like okay here take the football and run it to the end zone it's a homecoming game you're winning you know that's oh, yeah. and that was the whole shtick and i saw this and i immediately saw that i go how fuck, how dare you i was yeah. like you guys are, and the thing is is i let it go i, I could have like called it out but i let it go because it worked it backfired on them they wanted him to be like, sort of like, this is what the manosphere is really about. This guy's the foremost leading expert on the red pill, right? The Ben, whatever his name was, who I'd never heard of him in my life. Clearly guys on the spectrum. So when I got on there, like within the first five or 10 minutes of that show, I go, okay, I know what I'm dealing with now. And so I went in there. I was, I was as, I was, uh, diplomatic and as nice as I could be to Ben. And I was like, at the same time, I was like freaking like a surgeon with, with, uh, with Dr. Phil. <laughs> Oh yeah, this Imred Ahmed me, guy. By the way, that pisses me off because they're like they're you. He doesn't know like Ben is like so like autistic on on the spectrum that he doesn't know that he's getting clowned by Doctor Phil because Doctor Phil doesn't go right. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, he, he's a sex energy expert. <laughs> Do you have yeah, a girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, when I was watching it, I you know they put it's better than that too. That's why I was pissed off. Yeah, yeah. when I was watching that, I. I I saw the kids, uh, they were playing his TikToks, this kid. And I was like, oh, I haven't heard of this guy. Let me look up his TikTok because his name was there. And he only has like 800 followers or whatever. Right. Not that that really means anything. But yeah. I was like, you you know that it's totally planned out to shit on somebody when they yeah. get someone that's like, you know, not real, relatively well known. They were pre-establishing so the manosphere as being ridiculous. Right. They, did, they, didn't, they couldn't get someone, you know, like – Donovan Sharpin or someone that's been in the space a long time that's <laughs> ah. relatively well known. They get they get some kid that no one's no one's ever heard of to shit on. 
you know. Oh, you remember when Brutus the Barber Beefcake used to fight like John Romero or some random guy, and then he, they just needed somebody to cut the mullet off at the end of the thing. A yeah. jobber, yeah. yeah, yeah, a jobber, exactly. He's like, he's like, he's like <laughs> Last Joe in like you know Mike Tyson's Punch Out. <laughs> there's the name for that. There's the name for it. The wrestlers that take the fall, you know. He's, what I mean? he's, he was a, he's the red shirt on Star Trek. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They call that they call that a squash match. That's a squash yeah. match. Thank you. I knew it was yeah. something. But you see yeah. what I mean? Like for this whole, like all this stuff, social media has built up this insecurity in men that women are lo looking at you, leering up at the thing and mm -hmm. change their behavior and they don't do anything. And it's like, guys, trying to steal your money. you've had eight examples here of like personal experiences from us about how all of this is like scripted nonsense, wrestling promo kayfabe. Oh, like man. just mm -hmm. relax. No girl is like on clam alert watching for dudes. Clam alert. And clam alert. <laughs> Yeah, what was Royce's line? Have, like a girl will never that. fault you for trying to hit, like trying to sleep with her. Like they Probably should have that at like you know how like Planet Fitness has lunk alert, like the oh, light. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Alert. alert. Like I don't know why clam alert. alert. Yes. Just a giant <laughs> sound. sound. <laughs> clam alert. <laughs> yeah, you make a you make a good point though, Ryan. Um, so they had that. <laughs> Ryan, you make a, a good point. Uh, that's one thing that a lot of guys don't realize is that women have been looked at um, sexually like their whole lives. Like they know that we want to fuck. And so don't apologize for it. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're don't not creepy. Don't apologize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all it comes yeah. down to. Well, in the, I mean, you go to the gym, you should just go to, to get work done. Right. Like if you're, if you're there just to yeah. smash weights yeah. and get your shit done, you know, I mean, I don't care. These it's girls like, can wear these girls can wear their whole clothes. I'm all right with yeah. it. Like, like, yeah, I, all right, do you want to you want to go to uh, yeah. hey, let's go to the bar, Paul. Let's go to the bar. I'll bring my kettlebells. Yeah. Get out of our space, man. This is our table. We're gonna do a quick yeah. wad right now. Get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. We're not yeah. here for you to wad. Let's go. Let's go. Next set. We right, didn't hear this for you. <laughs> yeah, here's my question for you guys, though. Like, obviously, like, we're losing co ed spaces where it's socially acceptable to hit on people. Like, don't do it at the office because Me Too's got everybody paranoid. Uh, bars are closing down. COVID basically shut all that stuff down. Kids don't like going out to them anyway. There's no libraries that go for co like, where else do guys go if they want to go outside? And I don't know anymore? what I just go out. Like, you can still go to those places. They're out. Right? You still you know, <laughs> you have to leave your apartment out in Toronto. I'm not talking about places. us. We can handle it. I'm talking about the guys who are new. Like they, they just picked up mystery method. Like, oh, sweet. I'm going to go and run game or, or they're talking to Troy and like, all right, day's approach. Like, they're running out of start spaces, talking I think. To people. Just start they off are. by being social and being pleasant and being like, hi, how are you doing? How was your day? What, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you in for the time? That old one, right? That's well, it, though. I mean, it's 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 really the same. It hasn't changed. People are people. We're all instinctually wired to connect with each other. I mean, some things have changed, but if a guy like basically doesn't, it's all about frame. If he doesn't give a shit about it and learns just how to approach people and talk to them like mm. in a way that's not weird, it, it's like it cuts right through all that bullshit. Oh, it does. You know, it's just, it doesn't matter. It goes falls right back into the same conversation, you know, guys have been having with women since I don't know, fucking eighteen hundreds or something. I don't know. Oh, oh it was well that. before then. Nine hundreds, yeah, the cave bars, you know. Hi, <laughs> Cave Stacy. Cave Stacy. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, but Paul, Paul Mitt probably brings up a good point here. Is like it's also okay. So there's two two things that you brought up. One is frame. The other one is um, the um, what I've called sexual zones, and I think it was actually I think I stole that from you, Ryan. Sexual zoning back in the day, like I think it was like in 2016, 2015, 2016, when I started writing about sexual zones. But if you if you oh, get yeah. my my fifth book, I actually talk about that in the player's handbook because that's you have to. It's in the very beginning of it because it's like sort of pre-establishes like like here's where it's okay to like pick up girls, right? There are certain areas or certain places like you will become a creep if you try to pick up a girl, right? You there know. are areas like where uh like the, i get this all the time you probably heard this like one of the things is, is like uh you know is it okay to pick up a girl at the gym the other one is what about work should, hey this is really hot piece of ass at work man should i hit her up man? i'm gonna run the, the cube on her ryan can i do that and it's, <laughs> 
how how attached are you to your job, dude? <laughs> that's the that's the first question I would say. Yeah, go ahead and and pick up the girl at work uh, if you don't mind being fired, <laughs> and you don't mind like never working in that industry again. Maybe that then you know via con dios, man. But um, the so that's no so there's this so the, it's like the sexual zone thing, and I think that that is and I, again this is in uh, the, my fifth book, uh, Player's Handbook. Sexual zones are like places where like girls go to meet guys and guys go to meet girls. The club like is a sexual zone in some ways, like maybe the beaches or like a rave or like certainly EDC in Vegas. Is. Um, there's there's places where it's OK, but like then again, there's places that you, like most guys would think, oh, it's OK to do it here. And it's really not. For instance, <clears throat> I was just at the AVN Awards in Las Vegas, right? The, uh, the, <laughs> the adult video something awards. They make you sign. Like I, I, had a, I had a press pass, but like they still make you sign the same thing. If you agree to go in there, you agree. Basically, I will not I, the undersigned, will not be a creep and try to like Mac on these girls while I'm here. It's almost like the same kind of rules as like a strip club. Right. So you would think like by all by all, you know, visual impressions going to a strip club. Oh, that's a sexual zone. They're taking their clothes off. They're giving me lap dances. They're rubbing. You know, they're grinding on my dick. Right. It's a fantasy. No, zone. no, it's not. Because the minute you try to touch them is the minute the bouncer like picks you up physically and throws you out the fucking door. It's not a sexual zone. And so what happens is like you got all these guys who think certain zones or certain you know social instances it should be a sexual zone. In fact, for some guys, like if they're good looking, like they look like Justin Waller or something and they're got good game, pretty much those zones are sexual zones for them. But not for you. Not for you. It's contextual to the guy himself. And then also it goes back to frame. So frame, by the way, is not something I came up with or John from Modern Life Dating came up with. It's actually a psychological, sociological term that yeah. was way before, like back in the 70s and 80s. We talk so, about that in NLP a lot. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, frame's so, been it's, around for a while. It it's been style. around forever. And then the other thing, so like when you are out of your frame and you're in someone else's frame and you're trying to pick up on that girl and you're in her frame, it's always going to come off as creepy. Yep. Well, the uh, so when I we talk about like pickup for guys and stuff like that. I talk about the environment and you know, they're, they're their own identity. They're themselves and they're presenting a version of themselves. And that version of themselves is the person that she would have sex with that fits his identity in that environment. Right. And so like sometimes, well, this, you know, the reason why guys shouldn't necessarily hit a, hit on a girl in the gym is because he's not good at dealing with women yet. And he doesn't know how to be calibrated. Mm -hmm. There's a way to talk to a girl in the gym where it's calibrated to that environment and you don't come across as a creep and you, and you are acting and being the guy that she would sleep with in that environment. But that same girl and that same guy in a different environment where that's a more of a sexual zone, let's say a club or a bar, he can approach her differently. So like a guy without necessarily good calibration he learns some pickup skills and he goes to the girl in the gym using those pickup skills. Problem is it's the wrong environment for those skills. Right. And this is why, like there's these, I, I find these funny arguments in the space about like direct versus indirect game. And to me, it, it's la it's a funny argument. It's almost like back in like the nineties and late eighties when, uh, there used to be that debate of nine millimeter versus 45, right. As a, as a round. Right. And it's like, they'll both kill you. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's the Good context job done. when, 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 which one might be better than another. You know, if I, if I'm in a NATO country where 45, um, I can't pick up surplus 45 uh, uh, rounds off the enemy, but I can pick up a lot of nine mil. Nine mil is pretty good at choice then, right? So it's it all depends on context. And uh, same with direct versus indirect game. If you come across too direct to somebody in the wrong environment and you're not in the role of the dude she would sleep with, you will be the creep. You know, you'll get fired from your job. You'll get banned from your gym, those sorts of things. And so if you know how to be in that role, though, you know, to calibrate yourself socially to that environment, know how to work in direct game a little bit better. You can do those things, obviously do at your own risk in places like your job. But I mean, people get laid at work all the time. People get laid from the gym all the time. People get laid in these other spaces all the time, but they do it 
calibrate it. You know what I mean? That's the difference. Sometimes. Yeah. Like that, like that female officer who just got fired. She was calibrated pretty. Yeah. <laughs> on the, <laughs> on the direct, on Definitely. direct versus indirect game. I, I never really thought about it until I, I talked to Alan Roger Curry, but I used to think I used to have this impression that direct game probably wasn't as effective until I, I talked to him and I realized that was more of a self-limiting belief. And I think a lot of guys out there will be like, we'll just dismiss something like direct game because yeah. they're like, that wouldn't work. You can't just walk up to a chick and get her pussy wet like that. Well, it, it does work. It, it does work for a lot of guys actually. So yeah, if it it's, works it's for a lot of guys, the role. Yeah. yeah. If you're in the, if you're yeah. the, in the role of the guy who she would sleep with at the skate park, at the ski lounge, at the gym, at the club, at the coffee place. That, that's all it is, is you're in the role of that guy, whoever that guy is, you know, in her mind, however that sort of how she receives that message and, and direct yeah. is just fine. Yeah. If she's I can kind of sort message. of answer that question too, from the gym perspective, Paul, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, what I've noticed with the guys in there that use that and, 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 and the direct game is they're not calibrated. What they see is, yeah. is a girl looks at them from across the gym they vastly overestimate her interest in him. Oh, yeah. it's like this is a yeah. huge thing. Yeah. I think there's evidence yeah. that shows that men overestimate. So then they mm -hmm. go and use their direct game. All this doesn't work and they're a creep. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really bad at estimating the female interest. Well, they have to, that's that's that, evolutionary that's though, because we have to, like men have always had to err on the side of more interest than less interest, because if they didn't, they would miss out on a reproductive like opportunity, like evolutionarily yes. speaking. Right. So by the way, guys, if he you hesitates to masturbate, here's, here's how you determine, here's how you determine if you can hit on the girl at the gym, does she have like this, like in front of her, <laughs> <laughs> if this is if this if it's a, a device like this is in front of her. Don't hit on the girl. She's an influence. She's not a woman. She's an influence. Went all the way off camera to do that bit. <laughs> You're like, I gotta find my going back to the camera on the tripod. Abort, abort, abort. <laughs> going back to uh, going back to direct game too. One thing too that I uh, I had the miss conception about mode one uh was mm. that it was just walking up and just asking chicks if they wanted oh, to bang right mm. it's totally not if you and if you talk to alan well you can't anymore but if you uh watch the interview i did with alan one of the things we talk about is how he would actually test for interest he didn't just walk up and start talking mm. doing direct game he would walk up sure. and, and engage uh her body language you know mm -hmm. well the women, uh, yeah ios I mean, yeah i mean um let me explain. Let me explain to you why I always locked horns with Alan over direct game. Okay, and I hate to do this like you know post post mortem, but um, every time like because I have I've known Alan since like e since even before the uh, twenty one convention days. I'm actually the one that unfortunately Ryan, I'm the one that got him to go to. The, Dude, the you did that to all of us. I'll I know. <laughs> you guys. I'm so, this sorry. is all your fault. So I have good intentions, man. We trusted um, you, Dad. You put us but in I used the to, um, but, like I, I, I the first in fact. I, when I did his memorial service, like on my show, I played the very first like audio because I, I did an audio um, interview with him before I ever did anything video. Um, and then he had had mode one for ages before, like during like the the pickup artist days, he was still like pushing, you know, mode one as as his main, you know, sort of product. He came up with that in 1984. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then so I was like and I 100% I agreed with pretty much everything that he was saying as far as like not wasting time. It was the most pragmatic, most efficient thing I'd ever seen when I was when I first got into it and I was looking at. It. But then I, I realized that it was just a variation of direct game. I don't even think he would have called it direct game in 1984, 1994, even 2004. Right. Um because it was just it was it was a natural state for him. He just sort of figured things out. He's like, I'm not going to waste time with like, you know, what is it? A manipulative time wasters. Right. That was the whole thing. And so from an efficiency and a pragmatism uh, uh, perspective, it was a good it was a good idea. But it, it related to what the pickup artists at the time were calling direct game. Now, what happens is people think that it's one or the other. You're either this guy who's trying to coerce and convince and trick this girl into wanting to fuck you, or you're a you're a man and you go out there and you say, "Bitch, are you down to fuck or are you not down to fuck?" Right? That's the that was the whole like. But the, but when you take it in those binary terms like that, you don't do justice to either like indirect or direct game. So there are some girls where indirect game works way better 
than direct game ever would. And then vice versa. There are other girls where it's like, you know, why am I going to waste my time with this jerk chick? I'm just going to get down to the point. Let's get down to brass tacks kind of thing. And it works better because of that. They're just two different things. It's not either or. Right, and so exactly. that's why I, I put that, I tried to explain that as best I could in, in, uh, again, in, in my fifth book, in the, the player's handbook, there's a section in the player's handbook about direct game and the difference between those two. Some girls you will lose because you use direct game. Some girls you will lose because you used indirect game. It just depends on what you, you know, again, calibrating for the system, understanding and reading social cues. That's the problem. Like, like autistic Asperger's syndrome guys don't read, they can't read the cues. Yeah. So they don't know what's going to work best for them. And then on top of that, direct game was actually a derivative of indirect game because you had all these PUAs from like the RSD days and Mr. The Venusian and arts stuff from the mid two thousands. And they're like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of wasting my time going through all these steps and running the cube. And Hey, did you see the fight outside? You know, that kind of bullshit. Right. And they're like, why don't I just like strip it down to what are the absolute most necessary parts of game? And that ended up becoming direct game. And lo and behold, for the guys who are, who are good at it, it worked better than indirect game ever worked for them. So suddenly now there's this school of, oh, let's let's put this, you know, DVD in back then, DVD and, you know, seminars and everything about direct game. And so that was why there was like this sort of conflict between myself and, and, uh, and Alan Roger Curry. But that was the only thing, by the way, like people don't like say, oh, you guys agreed on pr like 90% of shit, except for that one thing. So let's harp on that one fucking thing. You know, I always saw it like you guys agreed on 90% of everything. I never saw it really, the conflict rise to the top, at least in, in my opinion. I never I mean, saw people, it. They want to poke that though. Like uh, for instance, I, I will, I will, will always like have a good conversation and poke uh, Mike Sartain about like men and women being friends. Well, yeah, especially when your business is being yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can, <laughs> but I fuck my friends. Um, What's the yeah, fine friends? What's not... the fine friends? <laughs> yeah, the fine friends. I, know. I wish. I, my, by the way, Mike wants to be on. The, wants to be a panelist on Rule Zero once he uh, can convince himself that he can get up early enough from the West Coast. <laughs> That'd be great, man. It's tough for me, by the way. <laughs> if it's not too much of an inconvenience for him, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, but I was going to say, as far as like the sexual zoning aspect of all this, um, I think it's even more difficult now as if it wasn't difficult enough for guys like to sort of figure it out. Because most of these guys who like, especially in this space, who follow us, they're not like they're not club rats. They're not gym rats. Hell, the first thing we have to tell them is get your fat ass in the gym. That's the yeah, first the thing we say. And they go, hey, there's girls at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should I pick them up? No, no, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so I think it's it's really sort of it's not just calibrating uh for the social situation, but it's also the environment. So going to a club, like, well, the girls are here to, you know, look 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 at the way she's dressed. It's like let it this is where you pick up girls. The girls are there to be picked up, right? Okay, that's easy. But when it comes down to the gym or it comes down to like church or it comes down to like the gas station or whatever it is, it's like the do I do it here or do I not do it here? Most guys are so used to like living online and behind a fucking screen that to put them in those environments, yeah, it's it's confusing. Hell, it's confusing even if you know game. <laughs> Well, and they don't understand too, like even the goals of the girls in those environments. Like a, a goal of a girl in the club, for example, isn't to like necessarily have sex tonight. You know, it usually never is. It's usually to get attention and clout and to status seek. And so then you get ordinary guy without status, you know what I mean? Trying to pick up at the club and then getting shot down a million times, not realizing that even guys with status you know, get shot down <laughs> a lot, you know, at the club. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, my, Myron from fashion fit was big on club game and he would get the table and the bottle and everything else. And he talked about how he would, he would approach, I mean, early on, I don't know what he's talking about now, but he would talk about it. He would, he would talk to a lot of girls and get shot down a lot before, you know what I mean? So he had girls that said yes, you know, because the like, they're there just to get looked at and hit on and say no and feel good about themselves. You're going to crash and burn. And you, I, I think the other thing that gets people is like when they, when they see guys who are like more like application, like practice driven, like game driven, uh, like you want to solve you, you want to lose your V card kind of thing. Those guys they, I think they get really frustrated with guys who are like the average red pill guy who just wants to get his dick wet for the first time in his life or get some girl to even like pay attention to him or kiss him or anything like that. Right. And, 
And so they get real frustrated. Hey, man, you should chase excellence for like that's not that's not the problem they have. They're coders. They make like two hundred thousand. They make a quarter million a year. They can't get a girl to touch the dicks. Right? right. That's their biggest problem. So when they when they go out to the clubs or when they go out it, assume, like a clubs, they didn't go to the clubs. They, they, they can they can go to like freaking Starbucks. Without like, you know, like that being a sexual zone, right? Oh, there's a really cute barista at Starbucks. Should I hit her up? Probably not. <laughs> She's a single mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a captive audience, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so like as far as like being practice driven, as far as a uh, game is concerned, like getting out there, like, make, uh, make mu muscles, make money, learn game. You know, the, the, the learn game aspect of it, I think, is probably the biggest sticking point for a lot of guys because they lack the social skills. And, you know, really the extroversion to go out and, and do the yeah. kind of stuff. And then so so then what? So then what happens? You have this 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 hot chick in fucking yoga pants who puts yeah. out this TikTok viral TikTok video in the gym, which is probably not a really certainly not for these guys, not a sexual zone to begin with. And then you come to find out she's got an OnlyFans and she's really just using that that outrage to funnel chumps like you promo. to go, you know, jerk off to her on freaking OnlyFans. <laughs> The marketing, it's marketeering, and bravo, by the way. <laughs> really well. yeah. Yeah, I got a controversial. Use. I was yeah. gonna say I got a controversial. Yeah. Respect the hustle, right? Yeah. <laughs> a controversial statement here that for the space is that I think a biggest mistake a guy can make, well, not maybe not the biggest, but a big mistake mm -hmm. a guy can make, is not working on his game before he's a higher value man. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a mistake. I think that, you know, this chase excellence you'll get, thing. You'll get, yeah. you'll get handled like a, by a predator because exactly. if you become very successful and you have a lot of money, there are girls who have been, who have been finessing men since they were 13 years old yep. and now yep. they're 30. And you now know, you they've got a lot of experience. Access. They've finessed a lot of dudes and then now mm -hmm. they got you. And then and you have you're thinking, oh, you I got hit the jackpot. <laughs> Well, that's I, I'll I'll, uh, I, I'll let me push back just a little bit on, on that, Paul. Is is I think that when you look at money, muscles, and game, yes, John MLD here. Okay, um, we all owe him a nickel. Yeah, okay. Oh, bye -bye. okay, so when you're focusing on those things, like the, it, it, I, I I hate the message that like focus on one thing to the exception of all. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's the point. No, <laughs> there is synergies. And I hate yeah. to use it. <laughs> synergies. I hate to use that freaking term, but it, it applies right here is if you get your money up, that's going to give you a different attitude when it comes to your social interactions in your game. If you went from this fat fuck to being like, you're at like 8% body fat and you've been just living in the gym for like, you know, a year and a half, right? And you're looking at, that's how, do you not think that that's gonna change your mind about your attitude and about your social interactions in your game? Of course it is. There's like different synergies between the two, between all of that. So my, you know, my sort of push has always been like, you know, don't just, you know, uh, chase excellence my friend well yeah do that but also remember that if you're not like synergistically like doing all of them all at the same time them, right? when yeah. you, when you have when you when you get made and you get paid and all that stuff you don't want to be a mark you don't be yeah. a chunk it's well, because yeah it's like you're not gonna you're like, work on you make my party b and she'll drug you and she'll beat you yeah. in the head and she'll take your money yeah you don't want to be <laughs> and well, then like, where will you be <laughs> you know it's like it's like you're not gonna like I'm going to work on my, my business and my money and never work out and eat like shit. Like, no, that would be bad. Like your body's going to break. Look apart. like Thor. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to look like Thor. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, but your body's going to fall apart. Your health's going to fail. And that's going to affect your ability to make money. Well, what people don't understand is you got to work in your game too, because mm -hmm having a bad relationship like these guys that i end up in, in coaching with me or in some of my programs some of them who are divorcing or been divorced from uh, they're high value men they make good money and they get cleaned out by some girl and it screws their business up out some of them lose their jobs and end up in these situations it's like you screw your ability to be chasing excellence because your problem with when you know, you're not good at handling your problem with women. because you made a bad decision because right. you didn't know game that right. affects the other aspects of your life. Your money and your exactly. muscles is affected by your stupid fucked up decision to get with this bitch that anybody would have gone red flags like that's yeah. now you're screwed for life because now you can't help but focus on those because you got to make up for it and make money and and, and look better or else she's going to take you to the cleaner. Right. So I yeah, read, read that read that super chat, Fitch. 
That's a good one. Yeah. Um, super chat five euros he says what can be fatal at the gym is that men more than women mistake friendliness for romantic interest and at the gym people are usually very friendly it's very true and yeah. this is a lot of the problem with uh people who don't understand body language that's why mm -hmm. uh, mld's course is so awesome yes. it's because yeah. my, a lot of these guys have no idea like looking they're talking to a girl that they're not interested just because of their body positioning whether they're, they're angling their feet or their knees or their hips or how they're bleeding their body or if they're you know protecting themselves from you like if you don't recognize these things you're gonna have a really hard time you know it's my best side. yeah i i uh, there's another uh, it's not a super chat but uh was it patrick patrick wood um i don't She's poisoning the social well for all of us, right? And I wanted to throw this at Ryan real quick here too, because uh -oh. like, there's also the downstream effects of this dumb bitch that's going out there and like complaining about go, how how dare you look at me, right? You know that girl. the The thing is, is then you get like pearl like, clutchers, the pearl clutch. Though no, then you get like people who want to like, especially in like sort of the the Shilla sphere, right? Where they're like, oh, can you believe women today? Like that, that becomes their, it's like grist for the mill, right? If you're, if you want outrage bait, you point at this rather than doing like any kind of like, you know, qualitative, like breakdown of what's really going on here. It's like, oh, I can't believe women today would, would want to think that guys wouldn't want to look at them. And so now what she's done is not only just uh, marketing for her only fans. It's also content and grist for the mill for guys who are like, well, you know, it's uh, it's because of moral degeneracy and we need to save the West. And this would never happen if we all just got back to church and went back to traditional moral values, Ryan. <laughs> I don't like Bible. that stuff. I really don't. It's just another simple, quick answer. They're like, oh, see, check well, yeah, the it's box. that's what dismiss, needs to happen. Right? That's the pill. But here's the thing. I don't I don't mind people disagreeing. Do whatever you want to. Right. The problem I have is those guys doing it because they aren't. Look, they could be gone and just not follow any advice and you would be better off than following their alternative advice. Oh, it's yeah. Worse. Well, that's the problem. It's it's like yeah, they have they give corrupt wrong. advice. It's corrupt advice. And then they go. But because Jesus and you're supposed to go, oh. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to take this bad, shitty advice now because I don't want to. I, mean. I don't like it. It's not because, not. like, if you have good advice, if you have good ideas, then you can put them out there. They don't have yeah. good ideas. They just have their ideas, and the only way they can make them good is by making everybody else's worse. Mm -hmm. They're so Jesus. bad at it. Also. They don't understand marketing. They don't understand like the the kayfabe. Nothing. She's so it's almost you. like I just get the vibe. You remember in the '90s? Mm -hmm. You guys might remember this. Remember the '90s where like all these evangelicals were coming out with rap videos because that's what the kids were into. But it was like the cringiest stuff ever. <laughs> it's, that's all I think of right now. <laughs> you ever see that that YouTube video where it's like the, the whitest pastor of all time, but he's like, Jesus Christ, it's my end, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, should go, I should go look this up. I should really go look this up. But like, it was, I don't know if it was the 80s, but I think, I'm pretty sure it was like the mid 2000s. Somebody sent me this video and it's probably out somewhere, but it's like this church video that was produced by like the men's group in this evangelical church. And they did a rap of instead of thug life it was dad's life dad life oh, right I and it was that like, one it was like here this is me you know shooting weed killer on the weeds it's the dad life <laughs> and they used like the song you know and then they rearranged the lyrics to and it was like the most cringe inducing shit i've ever seen in my life but and that's i mean exactly the point i don't want to put <sighs> jesus i can't believe i'm saying <laughs> I don't want to put like Adam Sosnick on blast and I don't want to put Jed on like sigh before you're Hello, okay, this is not a, this is not a, <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be good. Yeah. We're not watching. Like, yeah, it's like it. when you like guys if you're yeah, watching they don't watch, they, they don't watch this show. If you watch this show, now, now everybody in the chat, hey, I'm going to clip Martin in the head here. That's exactly what happens every time. Right? So you know it'll get back, right? Nobody watches my channel. That's the level of hate I get. Um, <laughs> we're going to tell all your friends what you said, you fucking idiot. Portia doesn't watch the dragon ship. She is yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course not. Um, but like, so when I, you know what, let me, I'm not going to pick on Jed. She did the kind of the same thing, but like Adam definitely did this. When this video came out with the girl, it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's evidence of this moral degeneracy. We need more guys like Andrew Tate to come out and straighten these bitches out. <laughs> it's, it's like, dude, she's marketing. She's doing the same thing you're doing. 
<laughs> but it's content for him. And I get, I would do the same thing. Why not? If I was doing shorts like that, I would, I would be, I'd be all over that. Right. Because that's what plays people want to, it's like putting women on blast. How see it's because your mama raised you wrong. That's why you go out there and you, what, what the hell, what the hell is this? You know, <laughs> what the hell is this right here? You know, um, but it, it's it's not only is it content for her or us for that matter too. We're doing the kind of the same thing. Yep. But we're doing we're hitting it from like a more analytical perspective, saying here's here's what's we're, we're revealing the game instead of playing the game. Like Adam Sostic, when he sees this, he it's like moral outrage. It's playing the game and doing it very well. <laughs> playing the game, using her for content. We're doing the same thing, but our content right now is this is what she's doing. And we're explaining the game like fucking gamma nerds. But <laughs> but when he does it, it's like the, he gets a different reaction because everybody follows him or, or guys like him to get this sort of like it's indignation bait is what it is. You know, when I, when I talk about how like we've <clears throat> we've raised our boys as if they're, you know, defective girls, by the way, that's Camille Pagley and not old Tomasi. Um, <laughs> I, I got to clarify because people will hit me. Uh, but those guys have become defective women right now. And because they're defective women, they get off on indignation just like women do. So when you see something like this and people are like, oh, I was at the gym and just nonchalantly and this chick was just doing that. And I saw her ass and I, 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 I glanced over and, and now I'm on, now I'm, now I'm worldwide live worldwide on TikTok as this viral video of 7 million views, right? Just because you did this. We should normalize guys giving thumbs up in the background for the girls who film their stuff. I feel like that would just ruin yeah. it. You know, if they're filming, photo like, bomb them. They yeah, just go over the background, go, video hey. bomb them. Like, yeah, I go, hey, what's up? You know, well, like, if the guys oh, are really smart, they get uh, you know their own brand, their own their own stuff to sell. Get the QR code on their shirt. <laughs> Going there in the background, they can do whatever, and then like people will see the QR code, and they can just totally sell the website. Oh God, the inception is just insane. Yeah. Yeah, all- <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get to the bottom layer. Right? <laughs> yeah. Somewhere near there's one like sincere guy who's just getting raw dogged by like eight influencers. Oh, the poor bastard. <laughs> yeah. I would do that. That actually actually that's not a bad idea, like like practically speaking. Like if you see that at the gym and there's some chick there with like you know the camera on the tripod. Yeah, I go, hey bro, yeah, she's looking hot. Look at this. Yes. You guys want to you see people say I don't have solutions. There's your fucking solution. Solution. Why don't you go and do something? I'm, 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 I'm not kidding. <laughs> I think that would be funny, and you'll never be on the show going, "Oh, look at this creep." You know, it would go viral. It would go viral because you did that. Yeah. You would be the one that would go viral. Like, like, like Jack, like Clout Jack, the Clout Jackers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You go, girl. Get it, girl. Get that squat. Woo! Rolla doesn't give us anything practical. Yeah. I'm just here being a fan. What do you mean? I'm not doing it, it, and aside from this too, there's a good point for guys to take from this. Like irreverence is such a superpower. We call it being aloof, but it's essentially irreverence. When things aren't serious, don't take them seriously. When things are serious, take them seriously. But for most social interactions, like nothing is serious. Mm-hmm. Right. A girl calling you a creeper. Sure. She may think you're a creep, but if you can just laugh that off and walk away, it's, you know, that whole inside people's frame thing. Look, man, just wanted to hit on you. Didn't mean to offend. I'll catch you later. You hand up a little bit mm-hmm. of grace, a little bit of charm. You walk away. Yeah, sure. This chick may think you're a creeper, but at least the whole gym's not like, dude, I have a chance at this chick if I beat this guy up in front of her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Did you ever see those? Did you ever see those videos? Uh, they were they used to be popular. I don't know if they're still on. They, it used to be like Vine or some shit, or maybe Snapchat or whatever. Mm-hmm. It would be like the father of the daughter who was like, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, doing like stupid shit, and he was in the background going. You know, like like mimic, like mocking her in the background. That's what needs to happen. You have to be the one to go and do that when you see that shit. What is this? Oh, is this is this how like is this how Paul like get this point in? He's like, they keep talking. To me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul, for your seven cents for chat. All right, <laughs> There's an argument going on in, about how uh, you know it's Nothing. creepy for guys who are in their 40s hitting on girls in their 20s. That's that's, oh, wrong, that's, that's wrong a self limiting belief, guys. That's self limiting belief, 100. percent I'm in my, my 40s. Know. My girl's in her 20s. Ask my girlfriend and everyone else I dated well, since. Well, yeah. remember you were just talking about the every six <laughs> months you recycle memes. That's my fault because I recycled the one where I have those ISIS guys throwing a gay guy off a, a building. 
and they had spices weird. guys and they put the like middle-aged women and the guy <laughs> being thrown off the building was guys who date younger girls yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like a thing now for another week it works out. every time yeah. every and by time. the way and, and by the way uh mike sartain 45 his girlfriend 21 i've just yeah. never yeah. seen a 23 yep. like <laughs> they may get they may goof on creepy guys that hit on them but i've yeah. never seen a girl who's attracted to older men heck ali is on like a tirade right now like yeah. basically cheerleading that on Dude, if she's 20, damn right, get the 45 year olds. People that are into it are into it. And the people that are into it are the 45 year olds that don't want to be outcompeted. And that's, again, Mm -hmm. don't take it seriously. It's just a reverence, man. I know. Well, they're all in it. Seriously, I'm at the point right now where it's like, if I see that shit and it's like something I've seen over and over again, I will (laughs) will totally viciously mock you for that. That's good. That's that that, that half your age plus seven thing that was invented by older women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's. It, it, just ignore all of that. Yep. If, if you can pull them, pull them. Mm-hmm. Whose dog is that? Is that here? That's not Ryan's that's dog. Right? dog. No, that's way too much. I'm going to mute my yeah. stuff right now. I, going, hey, yeah, Rolo, I watched Metalhead. Now I have nightmares. Oh. I told you, man. I told you that would like. I, I thought you were referring to that when you first came up with like you know. No, Rolo. I was. I was just not a, just. Regular normal stuff I've seen by I do a show uh, mix martial mix mental mindset with uh, Jason yeah. Burmis on on Mondays and we talk about a lot of conspiracy stuff I and MMA the title and, and we've gone over a lot of the robot dog and drone technology oh. stuff that's out there mm-hmm. there's there's some guy from years ago giving a speech about you can put the nanobots in this pen and I could release it in a stadium and we could kill everybody in the stadium yeah. like mm-hmm. they had that technology like five years ago. You know, yeah, so by like, the way, that um, terrifying that episode, to, that to, episode like, this stuff. the episode of 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 what uh, of uh, Metalhead on Black Mirror. That's like probably like from four years ago. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. a scary then, part. <laughs> for, like, uh, anybody who hasn't seen, uh, you can get your robot dog shirts. I uh, did. I'm out. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> got mine. I already got mine. I'm gonna. I might cut the sleeves off though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's tank top of options. I'll just flex. There. They'll fall off. Yeah, <laughs> they'll fall off on their own. Hulk out. Just Hulk Hulk out. Start kidding me. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, no, I was gonna say there's another one too. You really want to fucking if you really want nightmare nightmare fuel. Um, there's another one on, I think it's on Black Mirror where they did they explored the uh the mini drones, like the flying mini drones, and they have one shot, they're like one bullet in the in the mini drones. And it's like technology that's tech. Technically, we probably could if we haven't already figured it out. Yep. Where we can, they're assassin drones, and they can like fly. You wouldn't even know that they're there. One shot, bam! Right, one shot, one kill. Yeah. I mean, unless something really weird happens, but like they they explore this, and then at the end, at the end of the show, I'll give you just a spoiler alert. At the end of the show, they have like this swarm of these things. Yes. <laughs> do riot control. I was like, holy shit, <laughs> that will give you nightmares right there. It they will. That's pretty amazing. And I think we have the technology actually. It exists now. Oh, yeah, Sorry, Ryan. Ryan. Not not dog, you know. so. Ryan's like, when are we going to get back on board? So Paul's like, no, no comment. No, no, I kind of like the <laughs> no comment. Right. Honestly, Rolo, and I know this is off topic, but I like when this thing kind of meanders, then comes back to the point, then meanders. Because the one thing I hate about other people's podcasts and why these ones are awesome is because, like, we're human beings. You can tell we're not just dancing brands here, like, pitching courses every. 15 seconds for meundies or whatever it's like i think it was a guy actually did a tweet you remember this it was like a year ago and they're like we were busting clary's balls or something like that everybody's like dude you should totally do a show where you talk about male banter and bonding i'm like it's every fucking episode you son of a bitch i know we're showing you I know. <laughs> if you explain a joke, it's not fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. So all these little meanderings are like mm-hmm. there's like a subtextual lesson in here too for guys, which I think is more important because like, do you really need two hours for us to explain to you that some thought selling or OnlyFans at the gym is stupid and you need to like be smart about hitting on girl? No. But learning how to not be autistic, we told you all the time, don't don't be autistic, don't be autistic, and then we gave you an hour and a half of examples of not being autistic. If you want to learn, you'll learn how do you like not be autistic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trick is eye contact, but you count to three, and then you look away, but then you look back. One, two, three, and then you're counting in your head, but then you got to listen to what they're saying. Like they mm-hmm. love challenges; they're smart. Right. Guys. You need a ten point guide on how mm-hmm. not to be. Or hold your eyes like this all the time. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. for beta great. males. You don't like it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. I hope you guys out there are taking notes. This is this is <laughs> but solid. Fair, if you were gonna leer at a girl valuable. at the gym, that is kind of the thing. Like you know, one like uh, it's like in the military. You know that move on the ones, pause on the two threes. One, two, three. One, two, three, and then works for drill, and it works for not being too creepy when you're staring. I had a, um, I had a. Or you pan, and then you quickly stop, and then continue to pan. People think that we like don't give any like a- actionable advice or actionable information, right? We um, do every single time. We, we do episode. every freaking episode. Um, but like when I when I was on the last time I did Access Vegas, by the way, Access Vegas will be with John from Modern Life Dating in Las Vegas. And I'm going to see if I can rope Aaron Clary into it, too, because he's down there as well. But it'll be on Thursday, February 2nd. This is this coming Thursday. You will not want to miss this one because I'm going to get some like I'm going to get like the biggest titty girls I can find to get on that show with him and sit right next to him. Um, but uh, the, the when I was on last time. Uh, we did a, uh, there's one segment of where we asked the girls, I think we had like five girls on. I, I said, what is it a, that a guy does that makes you feel creeped out? Because again, another topic in in one of, in my uh, my fifth book and Player's Handbook, buy it now, available on Amazon, um, is uh, is how not to be a creep. Like I have a, I had a, I had a, a three part, four part series on the rational male that I turned into a chapter, a full chapter in that book. And it's like how not to be a creep basically, or how not to come off as creepy, but you have to understand like the, like what it is that creeps women out and what creeps guys out are two very, very fucking different things. And so I had the girls on there and I asked them about that. They essentially confirmed everything I put in the book about that. Like, oh, they hold my hand, they touch, they they presume like familiarity too early, or they they like they they they, they do the Joe Biden thing, you know, like hey baby, you know, hey baby. Um, and they, but they came up with a lot of other things, not just like the the phys, like the kino, the weird unwanted kino, but like other other aspects too, which I thought was interesting. But when we think of like, when guys think of, I actually probably should clip this channel and do a full episode on this. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but when we think of creepy, I think of creepy as like guys who are like down by the fucking river living in a van, right? They, that guy or the guy, My brother. Yeah. Or the one old dude who looks like he hasn't washed himself in a while and spends a lot of time at the playground and watches the kids. Oh. That creeps me out. Okay. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, or the guy who like, like if I'm, I use this as an example. If I'm down on Fourth Street in Reno, which is like where Altar's Bar is, where I play, where my band plays quite a bit, that is like the worst part of Reno. And you go down there, and people are just like, mm, 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 they're talking to each other, and they're like, ah! like they're they're like talking to ghosts and shit, right? That creeps me out because that I look at that and I go, that's there's something that that behavior send like gets me into like fight or flight mode, right? Mm-hmm. For but that's like for me, that's like like life threatening kind of thing. Like I don't want oh don't make eye contact, don't make eye contact, you know. But for women, it's like they could get raped. Right. Yep, they, that's that's, right. that's, that's, that's so, so creepy. Like their their creeps, their creep protection is way more refined than guys is. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to point that out. So when a girl at the gym is there saying, This guy's checking me out, right? That plays the reason why that goes viral is because that plays on that creepy vibe that women go, Oh, he is kind of a creep. Oh, I can't believe are they all at my gym? Like suddenly, like their imagination, the, the, the hamster starts going spinning on the wheel, and that's why it goes viral. And then guys like Sosnick pick up on it and go, I can't believe bitches today. Like, and the, so it's this, <laughs> it's this freaking like it's a, it's self, it's a self perpetuating like feedback loop until it dies out. Six months later, some other bitch does it and it starts all over again. Well, but it's intersectional competition. For on, too. But it's based, but it's based on that fear, that creepy fear of there's guys watching me at the gym who I don't want watching me. <gasps> My <Yeah>. stars and garters. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the chick who's filming it isn't necessarily creeped out. She's doing it for clout. You know, she's yeah. doing that's yeah. her intersectional competition. She probably would be really upset and disappointed if like it nobody works. nobody right. ogled her. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that would be I gotta funny, do it John. again. Yeah, she's like, I gotta, I gotta to wear, I gotta wear something even more skimpy next time. <laughs> well, wait, so I say that again, Ryan. Oh, just laughing if she's like getting mad. It's like, guys, I'm trying to film some creep shit here. Stop being gentle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody's looking my ass. Like, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she goes into the bathroom and takes the spandex off, so it's just her g-strings. Oh, maybe now they'll look. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. She mentioned the out there were two gold stars stickers on her nips. Like, hey. Get your meat hooks off of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they when they turn uh, forty five and guys stop doing that, they're like, "What's going on? Why isn't anyone looking at my ass anymore?" You I'm know? invisible right. now. <laughs> Where's all oh, the good no guys? No no Thor, you never heard that. Anymore. You never heard that before? Hamster, the hamstering. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I, I just like the self perpetuating the hamster. Well. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. Hilarious. It's so true, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if, like, like if people get my vernacular from like back in two thousand four, Ryan. Oh, <laughs> I like it though. It's retro now, so it's cool again. It is retro. It is retro. It's, it's like retro. twenty years retro. It's like listening to the oldies station. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you're in the eighties. You listen to the fifties. He know. taught me a new well, one. He's got that Riz, as in like short for charisma. Yeah, he's Riz. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that what Riz means? That's what Riz means. Yeah. Okay. Learning all these things. My kids throw out okay. these new words and I'm just like, what in the is that on <laughs> is that on Urban Dictionary? I, I don't know what I have no I'm idea. Just... I just realized it's like reminds me of the old Cockney English where you started to learn all those terms and now it's like oh. coming back again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like I know that whenever, word, but why are you using it there? I don't know. Whenever, <laughs> whenever, whenever I say something like, "Oh man, I can't," you know, old school pickup artists, you know, you run the cube. When I say that, I know Ryan's the only person in the chat that's gonna get that. <laughs> that's always for you, Ryan. That no one else, no one else is gonna of pick course, up. Man, that got me my woman. Butterflies <laughs> in the stomach. I love that. I owe the cube everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> oh shit! I'm not AI. Wait, hey, hey, I oh, Ro- Rolo is. <laughs> AI? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We're actually all AI. Thing. None of us are actually here. Like, uh, the cartoon self, self should come up in the next this. episode, Rolo. I should. I should. I should, I should be. I should be into. Uh, you know, after the, the Doctor Phil thing, I should like. I don't know. Become my version of like Max Headroom. <laughs> well, oh, I caught the cartoon version of you. The you original. That? That's you, right? Yeah. Oh, you mean the the one that Clytus? Uh, Clytus yeah. Is, that's I'm working on other stuff with him, by the yeah. way. He's really good at he's really good at animation. He's like he's like a huge fan of mine. So he's t- like he'll take my audio and turn it into. Uh, he's getting better too. Yeah, like if you really look at his really stuff yeah. and you look at the stuff he does now, I'm like, damn, dude, you come a long way. Really <laughs> good. good, yeah, yeah. And people love. We got, those. A, we got a super chat here too. from uh, Aaron Clarely, alle- allegedly. I don't know if that's really him. He says, it is. Uh, has Ryan it said Cappy. something purposely contrarian yet? <laughs> <Where Ryan's laughs> that's like, that's probably you know, that the is only guy who doesn't pile on him. He sure is a real jerk to me, you know. <laughs> and the only guy is not calling him gay, and he's got like, that's weakness. I could jump on it like he. Just... <laughs> Dad beats mom, so mom beats the kids. Action right here. I don't like it. I don't. <laughs> I, should, I don't. You should question if if Clary's too nice. Clarion, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. I came here for a good argument. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why, is he, why are you in the chat get in the damn thing you don't yeah why are you not no, here jerk off. You know? like, he's, on <laughs> hike. he's on a hike taking pictures of him flipping the bird to stuff if that yeah, is probably. actually aaron i'm going to get you in modern life john on access vegas on thursday and i will make you pay for that comment oh <laughs> Because that the line could be in the chat and he'll go, has Cappy said anything purposely gay yet? <laughs> <laughs> has Cappy talked about the uh the interest rate yet? <laughs> Cappy's the only guy where we're being surrounded by chicks with big boobs is punishment. <laughs> Everyone else is like, This uh, is great. Dude, that was my of, life is pretty awesome right did. now. Best yeah, show <laughs> great, <laughs> another girls around me. Cause it's, it's one thing I got, I've been on, I've been on fresh and fit with, with Aaron, I think a couple times, like when we did an after hour show, he'll just pick up and leave. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> like, hey, it's 11 o'clock time for me to go get mad. Right. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, oh, look at the time. <laughs> G, though. That's like the ultimate G move right there. He's like, screw mm-hmm. these yeah, he picks up and goes. <laughs> and you know, what's funny is like no other guest would Myron or fresh, like, like, like think that's odd. Like, okay, see you guys later. Okay, bye, <laughs> bye, Aaron. <laughs> it's like it's like your friend leaving the house party early. <laughs> no, he does that. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> he couldn't do that. He couldn't do that with like you know jet screaming hootie queens at the table with us. So like, but I he could have. I wouldn't have thought of anything of it. But <laughs> he, he, that was a really good show for us. I'm I'm hoping to sort of do a repeat of that when I got John on there as well, because because John like is merciless with him, like gay. Yeah. <laughs> I can hardly wait to see what John pulls in that. 
Yeah. That's funny. Aaron's got to, he's got to, Aaron's got to put something in his back pocket and get him back. Yeah. If you want <laughs> entertainment value, that's going to be your show. <laughs> well, uh, hey guys. So we're, we're over the uh, 90 minute mark. So you guys want to, you guys want to wrap it up a little bit? Sure. But you guys got sure, anybody, anything else to you say about the, the gym so hot? Stop watching us. Wrap it up. Does that mean I have to make lame lyrics to a popular rap video? All right. Let's, uh, we'll go around here. Uh, Paul, what's going on? Uh, follow my new TikTok account at Best Men's Pod. My primary account is in a crushing shadow band, so I started a new one. Uh, we've talked about pro wrestling a lot in this episode, so drop a one in the chat if you're watching the Royal Rumble tonight. Uh, subscribe to the Come On Man podcast on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. I've been doing live streams now on Wednesday and Friday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on YouTube, so tune into those. Uh, Monday's episode is uh, the Manosphere's favorite duchy, Jack Napier, returns. Uh, we were supposed to talk about how women like men with hobbies, but we ended off going off on a tangent about Liver King sunning your balls. And Yeah, he wanted to avoid out. the Lego topic. That's why. <laughs> yeah. we, did, we do talk about Legos a little bit, but uh, it's mostly about Liver King and sunning your balls. We need so. to get Jack. I, I think we should accept Jack as finally a, a junior member of Real, Real Zero. Yeah. If, you, if you'll accept. That European in there. If he'll accept, he's, he's sort of trying to move his way out of the manosphere. As well, at least he says he is. You know, you can't, you can't. Everybody's leave this life. I told you that's 2023. It's a new trend. He's from Holland. Isn't that weird? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thor, what's going on? All good, brother. Um, for sure, guys, come check me out. RP Thor got an episode of the Dragon Ship coming up in about an hour, and we're going to talk today about some oldie good stuff. It's uh, we're going to discuss why Chad Lay's. And Brad's pay. Mm. So I think you guys could figure that one out. We'll have today at eleven. Where did you get Brad from? I like Brad. Is that from like like Rocky Chad. Horror Picture Show? <laughs> Chad pays Brad. Or Chad, Chad pays Brad pays. Brad, you fag. <laughs> Ryan. Uh, actually, I just finished a pre-record of Red Morning with Flawedzilla, who you guys nobody knows who he is in this space. It's awesome because. It's like we were all over the map. We went from his stuff and music to the whole like uh, black welfare mom epidemic to lesbians training, like making men feel ashamed about being men to overcoming hardship to long term relationships. And my favorite part of it is where he was basically like the thug drugs didn't even like women like super aloof, super like all the alpha traits got and the girl basically begged him to stick around the whole relationships or woman's job he's been together longer than matt walsh and his fuck trophy so that was pretty awesome check out that and then you know me praxeology volume one frame i cannot believe how how proud i was of my first book because this second book taught me my first book was a piece of shit <laughs> and we the audio book is almost out yeah it's time. i've just about got the recording finished it's going to be a about a six to seven hour listen and I have to do some, like a week or two of uh, mastering. And then it should be out in March. So if you're one of those people that don't like to read, but you love for me to read you the book, then yeah, hold on. It's going to be awesome. And then beyond that, just read to me, guys, Uncle man. They're bigger. They're more interesting than me. I'm just some idiot Canadian who runs his mouth and gets people pissed off and make ads. Oh, the Matt Walsh ad promo is almost finished i think you're gonna love it never <laughs> <laughs> yell at me on youtube you know i'm making that into marketing sir <laughs> <laughs> Rolo, oh, what's going on? Oh, boy. okay so watch the chat here really quickly this is um the link to Phil show. There you go. Because people keep asking me for that. <clears throat> hey, where's the link? When's it gonna come out? I, I missed it. I don't it actually own a TV. <laughs> uh, so there it is. If you want to watch the full show replay, I just put it in the chat right there. Uh, yeah, I was on. I was on a daytime talk show not too long ago that I wasn't allowed to talk about. I still am not. I, they do, still like the NDA. I can promote all all I want, <laughs> which like give you the links, but I can't talk shit about it. However, that doesn't mean that Donovan uh, Sharp can't talk shit about it, which he did. So if you go to his channel and you check out his sort of play by play of the Doctor Phil uh, encounter, uh, and by the way, there's supposed to be. Another one, there's supposed to be a second part to this where the, where the audience actually asks me more questions. Um, but uh, once that is out, I think once the second show is out, I'll be able to speak a little bit more freely about the whole thing. Although I'm, I can't write a book about it or like, you know, make any like real money off of it for being a 
bitch. Um, anyway, so uh, tomorrow is uh, my show, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I will I will deliver on the five hour show that you've come to expect from Roll Tomasi. Uh, I don't know who I'm going to talk shit about, but I probably will. Um, I I have a few people on the list right now, uh, but it's not going to be shit talking. I want to get into Frame. Actually, I'm I'm kind of glad that uh, that uh, that Paul brought that up today because I want to get into like understanding like some old school like older principles and how they apply today, or like maybe how not to be a creep. I'll probably get into that. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be kind of like red pill potpourri tomorrow. I, I'm going to probably hit a lot of different topics. So, and then uh, I've decided that it, at the very least for the last hour or so, I'm going to do Q and A's because I have so many people ask me to do, do Q and A's and I don't want to necessarily do a dedicated show, at least on, on Sundays, but I will give time. I will allot some time for, for Q and A's. Uh, I am working presently on the cover of Myron Gaines' new book, Why Women Deserve Less. I will probably finish that up this week weekend. And now that the whole thing is complete, um, he'll be able to. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all waiting on me. Um, but I, I do. I'm doing the cover for him, and so that'll be coming up. I will probably be. In, oh, and then of course the the big news is uh, this week I will be in Las Vegas uh, starting Wednesday. And I'll be there from Wednesday till Monday. Um, hopefully, I'm I, the reason I'm taking a long time is because I'm going to buy a bitch in Camaro while I'm in uh, in Vegas. So I need a I need a, a run around car, and I've decided I'm going to get like an older Camaro. So, uh, so my, well, people don't know that you know it's funny. People don't know this, and you guys, by the way, this might if, if you're interested. Um, my brother, people don't even know I have a younger brother. My younger brother, uh, he makes his living off of reconditioning and re. Uh, restoring um, old muscle cars. And he does other work too, like custom jobs for like Ferraris and stuff like that too. But like, he's the guy that goes and takes the entire year to build like three or four cars. And then he auctions them at Barrett Jackson. Um, if you've, they just had the auction just recently. That's why I'm bringing this up. It, it's on ESPN and you can see all these great classic muscle cars or like custom jobs and stuff like that. So I'm going to buy a Camaro and I'm gonna give it to my brother and say, go, go to work. <laughs> so I might even actually do a, do a, an Instagram or something on that as well. But anyways, Dr. Phil's out now. You guys can go finally go check that out. Tell me what you think. Uh, I think I did pretty good. Uh, I will, I will get it. I can't, I can't give you details about the show, but I can give you my impressions of the show. So I'll probably do that tomorrow on tomorrow's show. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Paul? everybody? What's <laughs> go to apexmindset.net if you need anything. You can go to my channel, uh, Apex Mindset, to Go subscribe to that. I'm doing a show. I'm trying to make it a regular, like, scheduled show on Tuesdays at noon. So uh, we'll have different segments and usually a topic we talk about. And that's pretty fun. Um, and then Apex Inner Game. So go over. I put it in the, uh, the, the uh, chat here. I'll do it again. Um, but go over and subscribe to that one. And um, I'll do another high production value video over there. My, my first one went pretty well. So, um, and that's it. You know, I got, you know, coaching services and a mastermind group and all that, but you can reach that stuff at the, uh, the website or just DM me. And uh, that's, that's all. That's all I got. Nice. Uh, that leaves me. All right, guys. Uh, go to johnfitch.net. All right. Go to johnfitch.net. Sign up for the newsletter. And, um, I got a lot of stuff up there. I got an intro to uh, practical self-defense that's free. You go to the description stuff below, find that, get yourself started. I'm working on the practical self-defense that will be up for sale a little bit later. I just am busy with kids and uh, I've taken on some more teaching classes. So time is uh, limited. I also have my learn to fight videos that are up on um, my YouTube channel. Check those out. I have my Fitch Pilled videos where you can take the most valuable pill there is out there. All the red pill, blue pill, purple pill, God pills. It's too much. It's too much to sift through. Come pills. to me and take the Fitch Pill and we'll get you started. Dog out, pill. Right? So <laughs> go, to the, go to the website, sign up for the newsletter. And I'll check you guys later. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. That was a good, fun discussion. Um, I hope you take that advice and put some action to it. All right. We'll check you all later.